Welcome back to Landmarks Discovered. In this episode, we'll take you to 400 South Ocean Boulevard. The internationally renowned 20th century American architect Edward Durrell Stone gave Palm Beach one of its most iconic buildings. The 400 building encapsulates many of his famous design principles, including sensitive designs for outdoor living. At the time of the 400 commission, Stone's work was incredibly popular. He had commissions on over four continents in 13 foreign countries and in 32 states. He created original buildings by reinterpreting the evolving architectural styles of the time and even introduced his own school of new formalism. As a master of his craft, he received five awards from the American Institute of Architects as well as five academic honorary degrees. When we look at 400 South Ocean, it is so different from the architecture here in the town of Palm Beach. And Marie, can you tell us why it has such a distinct look? Right. So this building is sometimes described as modern, but it's actually a new formalist building. And new formalism was a style of architecture largely spearheaded by stone. And the style seeks to achieve monumentality through the use of luxe materials like travertine and marble. And it reinterprets modernism by reimagining classical forms. So in this building and many of other stones buildings, you see very slender columns and a flat slab roof. And a lot of these warm, elegant uh, details are a key signifier of new formalism. Well, and I think that that's very much represented in some of the other works of his that we may be more familiar with, like the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts or the embassy in New Delhi. And those are both designed right around the same time as 400 South Ocean Boulevard. So the building in New Delhi opened in 1959, and that was really the building that defined new formalism. And in some ways, you can see some similarities between these two buildings. They both have a central courtyard, and they both were sensitively designed to work in a tropical environment. So for instance, there are no corridors in the building and Stone really loved to design buildings that were corridor free. And what that does is it enables all of the units to be open to all of the air circulation and sunshine around them. And the courtyard water garden was designed by Stone's son, Edward Durrell Jr. Edward Durrell Stone Jr. was also the landscape architect for Earl E.T. Smith Park. The park was built by the Preservation Foundation in 1989 and is located adjacent to Town Hall. When you look at this location of the building by the ocean waterfront and you're just walking beside it, you can kind of just see this modern timeless elegance, but the real magic of the building happens when you step inside and you see the atrium and then you go upstairs and there's one of the first rooftop pools here in town. And you can see how it was documented throughout history. I think one of the most iconic images we have is Slim Aaron's doing the Lily Pulitzer shoot in the atrium back in the 1960s. And we also have some wonderful images by Burt Morgan really showcasing this kind of mid-century beauty. I love seeing the juxtaposition of new interiors with historic buildings. And you get to see that so much in condos because everyone has their own design for their own unit. And You know, in this episode, we can see three totally different interiors that have been updated and modernized from the historic interiors that were originally built for each condo. One was uh, redesigned by Amanda Lindroth, and you can tell that their residents uh, really took joy in bringing color to the apartment. And the other two have been redesigned to fit the more modern needs of what is needed to live here today. So staircases might have been changed 
but we can see that consistency of always having that indoor outdoor connection. You can actually see a version of what the staircases looked like in the apartments when you look at the exterior staircases in the courtyard that lead all the way up to the sixth floor. It's the first condominium in the town of Palm Beach. And not just in the town of Palm Beach, but in the state of Florida. And I remember you saying that came about because there was like a 1963 act that made condominiums okay to build. Right. So this building was the first one. So it opened in December of 1962. So even before that act was officially passed. And originally the building was going to be uh, rental apartments. And then due to some of the economic issues that were going on at the time, they decided to make condominiums instead. This building opened to much fanfare back in 1962. There were over 200 people at its opening, and it was a great celebratory moment for the town of Palm Beach because it was one of the first condominiums, but also one of the first buildings designed by an internationally renowned architect. We have to realize at that time, this was really a time period where architects were star architects. And Edward Jarrell Stone was one of the architects featured on Time Magazine. He was internationally known. And the town of Palm Beach recognized this achievement by landmarking the building back in 2012. This was such a great feat for the building because it is one of the first condos within the town to be landmarked and needed the full agreement of the condominium's membership. Filming this episode of Landmarks Discovered was especially rewarding because we had the opportunity to sit down with the son of Edward Durrell Stone which is a first for the series. Dad, of, of course, uh, between 1927 and 1929, he did his grand tour of Europe that was sponsored by the Roach Fellowship, which is a prominent uh, fellowship that's given to the, the single most deserving architectural student in Massachusetts on an annual basis. So for two years, Dad traveled throughout Europe and saw the important monuments of classical and Renaissance architecture, but also modern architecture. He saw the work of architects like Willem Dudok in the Netherlands and uh, Le Corbusier, and that influenced him, at least initially, to do what's called international style modernism, which is a very spare, volumetric, white, austere uh, mode of expression. And from 1933 to 1940, that was uh, the work that he did, notably some homes in the New York area, but also the Museum of Modern Art uh, in New York City in 1937. In 1940, he met Frank Lloyd Wright in Taliesin in Wisconsin, and he said of the, the visit, it was the first time I'd seen one of Mr. Wright's buildings, and I was overwhelmed by its beauty. And really, from that point on, he practiced uh, architecture, a warmer architecture, that was rooted in the American architectural tradition, and it bore distinctive details of Frank Lloyd Wright's work. 400 South Ocean Boulevard is actually an example of new formalist work. It's symmetrical, it's classically referential. The one uh, element that you do see are these uh, rectilinear openings in the overhang on the penthouse roof. That's from uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's residential work. Dad, when he toured the great monuments of Europe, uh, was, was startled by the beauty of uh, the Alhambra Palace, which is in Granada, Spain. And it's, it's a series of courtyards with central fountains. And of course, a courtyard, in this case, really an atrium with a central fountain is the big design move of the project. One notable element of the building is the landscaping, both in the parterres, in the fountain, in the pool, and the perimeter on the ground floor, which was done by my late brother, Edward Durrell Stone Jr. Ed uh, founded an important landscape design and resort planning practice in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which still survives, called EDSA. My understanding is that the building was actually financed and constructed by the chairman of American Express, who was a member of the Everglades Club and wanted to house his friends, 
uh, during their winter vacations in Florida. So it was originally operated, to my knowledge, as a residential hotel. The building is, is four, four levels. Uh, there are flat apartments, single-story apartments on the ground floor. There are flat apartments on the penthouse level with wonderful wide balconies. I'd love to have one. Uh, and then there are two floors of duplex units where they have living room, kitchen, dining room on the ground floor of the duplex, and then two bedrooms and two baths and dressing rooms on the second floor. He, was, he demonstrated such sheer brilliance and skill that he rapidly joined the company of people like Nelson Rockefeller and um, you know luminaries in the New York social uh, scene. And I think Dad became really prominent after the New, the New Delhi Embassy, which was a celebrated work of architecture. And then a few years later, he was awarded the U.S. Pavilion for the 1958 Brussels World's Fair in Belgium. And those two projects gave him such a prominence that uh, Time Magazine decided to devote a cover story to him in March 1958. The explosive growth in his firm that occurred after the Time Magazine cover led to huge projects like the Standard Oil Building in Chicago, which at the time was the tallest building in Chicago, or the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C., or the State University of New York at Albany, which was the centerpiece of then-Governor Rockefeller's university system. Here in Palm Beach, we have we tend to favor traditional building methods, uh, and we tend to favor traditional styles, even if they are a amalgamation of numerous classical styles altogether. So it's wonderful to see that we have this beautiful example of new formalism here in the town that is protected. And that's Landmarks Discovered. We'll see you next time as we visit another landmark in the town of Palm Beach. Mm -hmm.